Okay, so in this talk, I'd like to talk uh, to review uh, a project that we've done recently on trying to identify the single most dangerous chemical present in British rivers following a risk ranking exercise. Now, I've often thought throughout my career whether the chemical I was working on was actually the one of greatest concern to wildlife and so what the project did was to try and set up a system uh, that could uh, review this in a rational way. So why should we begin risk ranking chemicals? Well what we want to avoid for one thing is the push and pull of fashions driving us in different directions, whether it be nanoparticles, antiandrogens, neonicotinoids, which may be irrelevant to what the major problem is with chemicals in the environment. So essentially what we're perhaps doing is setting up a framework that might persuade funders to focus their support on chemicals which are the greatest risk the, causing the greatest problems to wildlife. So what uh, we did was we pulled together dissimilar groups of chemicals that are known to be in our rivers. These included metals, pesticides, pharmaceuticals, persistent organic pollutants, nanoparticles, surfactants and others. And we picked about 10 or more, 20 pesticides in the different groups. These individual chemicals weren't selected at random. We tried to identify chemicals that are very prominent in the literature and considered by the community to be a significant concern for the freshwater environment. So this analysis is really a literature review and we collect effect data using uh, searching the literature with keywords. We're looking for European, uh, UK species, a range of endpoints. It's largely an uncritical process and one paper can only provide one data point for one species such as an EC50. And we're looking for about 50 to 100 records per chemical and we want to include algae, plants, invertebrates and fish at the very least. Regarding quality, we're uh, wanting to hold on to only where the Ecotox study used measured concentrations. Although for pharmaceuticals, because there's not much literature, we took everything that was present on those chemicals uncritically. And we're comparing this against observed river measurements, either collected by our regulator in the UK or the scientific literature. And where we had very little river measurements, we might use European water data, or we might use predicted river concentrations for British rivers based on regional dilution values and for low flows in particularly high impacted rivers. And what we're comparing, as you can see in this figure on the right, is uh, all the effects data. You can see each point is a single item of information, uh, one species, for example, against the measured river data over there in the, in the red data. And we're comparing the medians. These are the two black circles as the way to rank chemicals. So perhaps we better just reiterate what the chemical risk ranking exercise was not. So it was not traditional risk assessment. That's a different aim. And it tends to start from a precautionary standpoint using low X and PNEX. We're not doing that. In fact, we rather want to stay away from giving too much weight to the data, which appears to be showing effects at very low concentrations. So that data may not be repeatable. We're trying to avoid using PEC, so it is not PEC PNEC. We're trying to use as much measured river data as possible. And we're using the medians. 
we're not restricted to only OECD test species. We want a wide range as possible and as wide a range of endpoints. And we're not looking at microorganisms. So at the end of all of this exhaustive process, uh, this figure shows uh, all of the data points collected. This is pairs of data you're looking at. It was essentially the ecotox data on the left-hand side uh, uh, of any pair and the reported river measurements on the right. So chemicals towards our left here are the highest risk because they're median points. Those two circles are closest together. And towards the right are the lowest risk as their medians are very far apart. Now what we can do is to simplify things by just using the ratio uh, quotient, some people might say, of the median river concentration divided by the median effect concentration. If we get a value of 1, that's obviously a disaster, that's very high risk. So this is all the data now simply used as a ratio. And we're seeing the metals towards the high risk end here on the left, it's a log scale. So we're looking at a difference of um, almost sixfold in risk. So starting with the metals, remember this is a comparison of the median river and effect concentrations. We see our metals like aluminium, copper, zinc, and manganese at the top risk. Meanwhile, our two sample nanoparticles, nano-zinc oxide and nano-silver, are at the lower risk end. Uh, about a thousand fold lower risk than dissolved metal. With the pharmaceuticals, we found most of them at the low risk end, including diclofenac, but with one very distinct um, uh, contradiction, which is ethanol estradiol, the contraceptive pill, which turns out to be very high risk for us. With the pesticides, they span the whole range from high to low risk. Glyphosate, metaldehyde, and neonicotinide pesticide examples appear to be low risk. With some of the insecticides like chlorpyrifos, methamyl are at the high risk for our UK rivers. With the uh, POPs, it's a little bit difficult to use them in this analysis because exposure in the real world would likely be through the diet and sediments. However, Ecotox data still relies on water exposure. So in our case here, we lead with benzopyrene and lindane, in fact, an insecticide, as our highest risk POPs. And they're much higher concern uh, than uh, some of the other POPs that we've got here for wildlife. Moving on to the surfactants and others. A little bit to our surprise, surfactants like linear alkyl benzene sulfonate, LAS, comes out as high risk, as does alkyl ethoxy sulfate. Uh, you've also got triclosan, the antimicrobial, as a high risk, whereas compounds like bisphenol A and uh, phthalate, DHP, is much lower risk. Now we can use this data in a more refined way. Uh, so in this case, we're only looking at sublethal chronic ecotox effects, and we're only using refined water data. Uh, so it's only neutral pH toxicity data, only dissolved concentrations, only UK reports, and only reports in rivers from 2010 onwards. When we do this, again, metals are towards the high risk end on my left here, led now by zinc, but with LAS now coming second, and ethanol estradiol coming very high up the risk. So, for example, uh, looking at this, remember it's a log scale. Copper is 100,000 times greater risk to wildlife and rivers, it would appear, than the drug naproxen. So we can use a variety of different approaches, and here I've listed some of those different approaches, just giving the top 10 in order. So when we use just the simple risk ranking, aluminium, copper come top. Uh, when we refine this, aluminium drops down because we're only now interested in neutral pH. Uh, you can see with the lethal and sublethal effects, zinc still comes top with copper very close to it. LAS is also in the top three. 
when we're looking at sublethal effects, ethanol estradiol comes into the top five. If we're only interested in chemicals with a bioconcentration factor higher than 500, as you can see on the right, these two columns, metals stay top, uh, but we're now getting more insecticides and pops in the top list. Another way of looking at the research is to review which chemicals in our group are regulated or not regulated. Most are regulated. I mentioned earlier there are concerns around many of these chemicals, but the surfactants, which we found a high risk, are not regulated. So the messages from our rational risk ranking of chemicals. Metals have come out on top of our analysis led by zinc but uh, it would be similar with copper, manganese, nickel, aluminium, iron and cadmium for UK rivers. The surfactant linear alkyl benzene sulfonate comes high in our ranking, even though it's considered of little or no interest for the environment by most parties. Uh, another way of looking at the, uh, the output from this research is we could say that the top 10 chemicals of concern would be a suitable selection for carrying out relevant mixture studies. A rational risk ranking, as we've done, would not prioritise most pharmaceuticals or our nanoparticles as being of significant concern, with the exception of ethanol estradiol. And some of our highest ranked chemicals, such as LAIS, are not currently regulated, although others of low risk are. You notice I've listed a couple of papers there, which we've published, which gives you more detail on the risk ranking process. And a final thought to leave you with, is it rational to spend the majority of our research funds on chemicals which might be only less than 1% of the relative risk?